Uh, I hope you enjoyed the film. I want to just kind of explain a couple things um, to you. You know, how does you know copyright law work with with sampling? Um, first off, not a lot of people clear samples unless you're a big name producer because you're going to get caught and you're going to have to pay. Uh, a lot of mid-level record labels don't clear don't clear stuff because they don't do enough units get enough attention where they're gonna get sued you know um but if you're gonna go clear something you know again like you have to be a name brand you know to to get something cleared because a lot of times they're not calling you back you know um unless they know they're gonna get that bread off of you they're gonna get paid so um <laughs> But the, the challenge is you have to clear the sample on two sides. Number one, with any piece of recorded music, there is a, um, a copyright on the composition in it. So the lyrics and the, uh, the, the, just the, you know, the notes, the co literally the composition and the lyrics. So uh, that's called publishing. So anybody that's considered a, a songwriter needs to get paid and cleared. Now, they can demand 100% of your publishing royalties. And publishing uh, is you get paid from when, you know, um, you sell MP3s or copies, you get paid for streams, you get paid for radio play, you get paid for syncs with like TV, video games, movies, stuff like that. Um, for plays at bars, clubs, whatever, uh, as a song, as a songwriter. So, uh, but if you, if you, if you, if you sample someone, uh, they could ask for a hundred percent of, of all your publishing. Seriously, go on. Ah, uh, fucking chickens, man. It's like you feed them some like stuff and they like will never leave you alone ever. It's cool, but not when you're trying to film some shit. <laughs> Anyways, um, then you also have to clear it on the sound recording side. So that's a record label and a recording artist. And these could be totally different people. A lot of times the people who wrote songs um, were not like the people that recorded them, you know? So you have to clear on both sides. And, you know, um, you could have a lace up a hot joint, hot sample. And, and, you know, recording artists have had since the six, late 60s and 70s remix clauses. So they can say no. And pfft, you're done. You know, a record label could say, yeah, because record labels just care about money. But the, um, but the, um, the um, recording artist could say, no, I don't like, I don't like hip hop. I don't want my shit used like that. You know. So, anyways, that's kind of how that works. That's really dirty, uh, dirty rundown of of clearance, right? You have to. There's two copyrights in any piece of any piece of music, and you have to clear both sides. Um, you know, and then if you're sampling something that samples in it, then it gets more fucked up. Um, but in general, come on, in general, uh, you know, like, why do people sample? What, why, why is it good? You know, I mean, the way I look at sampling is it's like, yo, it's like, that's some, like, for me, that, like, a record that I sample is like a guitar string for someone who plays guitar or keys for someone who plays piano. I'm gonna just strum it or, or play it in a different way and coax different sounds out of it. Now, not everybody sees it that way, you know, and I'm gonna manipulate it and I'm gonna break it into pieces. I'm gonna chop it, um, I'm gonna flip it, I'm gonna filter it, I'm gonna pan it, I'm gonna reverse it, I'm gonna do all these things to it to try to change it up, right? Um, you know, so like, you know, yeah, people sampled because, I mean, number one, number, early on, people didn't know it was illegal. They didn't have a sense of the business. Uh, people were sampling because it sounded good, because of the texture of it. Um, you know, people were sampling because those early funk and soul and jazz records, they aren't like they are now where everything is like EQ to the max. Levels are super hot. Like if you open up like a, rec uh, a song that's been mastered recently, a pop song or something, in a... a a DAW, right, a digital audio workstation, and you look at the waveform for it, it's going to look like a two by four. It's going to just fill up the whole thing. Whereas you, you, you know, same thing if you look at a, a record, like a vinyl record, and you, and you look at the waveforms for it, it's really curvy, really nice, not like really, really pushed out. Um, and so you, you had a lot more room to manipulate that shit, to EQ, to make the bass fatter, to make the drums crunchier, poppier, punchier, however you want to say that. Um, 
you know, and it, you can't do that now, you know. Oh, shit. Uh, you can't you can't do that now. You can't make stuff like like there's not enough room, you know, or else it's going to sound like turd, you know. So a lot of those old records, you could just manipulate the shit out of them because they all recorded with like analog technology. Um, so so it just gave you more room to manipulate them. Um, I love the intro quote by Jeff Chang. It's like basically records are like the recordings of our history so like hip-hop gives us our history back in like a new form and that's a really really important part you know um it reintroduces us to our musical and cultural histories um which i think is is kind of like a dope a dope a dope part the other quote i, I love too is shock g from uh digital underground you know, y'all probably know them for the humpty humpty dance um where he says you know he compares the um the painter and photographer to the musician and the and the sampler, like like someone who paints pictures. When when photography first came out, they saw photography as lazy because all the training and time and, and that took them to learn how to paint <clears throat> and to actually paint versus someone who could just come and take a picture, you know. And so you reject photography as art at first, and then you know you recognize that it, yeah, it actually takes effort and learn. You have to learn how to manipulate the technology to make the image that you see. And he says it's the same thing for like someone that plays p piano, you know, um, you know, it's, you see someone who samples your music and it's the same type of, of feeling that it's not music, that it's not a musical instrument, okay? Um, you know, so I mean, but then you have Steve Albini says like, you know, you, you can just steal someone's life work in a matter of moments, you know, and, 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 and you know, whether you buy that or not, that's, that's kind of up to you. I, I don't buy that argument, right? Because um, I'm going to use that as like my clay, as my raw ingredients. I'm going to change it and I'm going to do my own thing with it. Um, you know, and it's not just like making a copy. But you see different types of sampling, right? Like, again, we have LP at the end. He says, if you can tell where I got my source from, you know, I haven't done my job. Because he's trying to manipulate and chop it up and, and, and hide his source material versus someone like uh, MC Hammer or Vanilla Ice with Ice Ice Baby, uh, which isn't discussed, or Coolio, um, who takes that Stevie Wonder riff. You know, it's essentially a loop, and it's like loops of popular songs. Like, like just, just kind of like uh, Rapper's Delight in Good Times. Like, they didn't change what, what they did. They had the musicians replay the bass line and, and all that, and that's why Niles Rogers got all the publishing on that, the songwriting credit for, for Rapper's Delight. And, you know, that's a, that's a, a major part. Is there's, there's very lazy sampling where you take a cool song, a song that's already popular, and you just turn it into a loop maybe change the speed of it a little bit, add some drums out to, out into it, and you make a hit song out of it, you know? As Tom Silverman says, like, who the fuck is Coolio? You know, um, who is Coolio, right? It's, we're talking about Stevie Wonder. And I think that's just a really important point to bring up because there's different levels, you know, there's levels to this shit. Kendrick, you know what I'm saying? Like, like to the sampling, there's real lazy shit, and then there's... Stuff like uh, Sage Francis says, like people who 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 think that sample artists are lazy, they don't see the process. They don't see the time that it takes to 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 do the manipulation, to do to program the stuff. They just see the loss, you know, perceived loss. And a lot of times, people don't even hear their their music that's been sampled. Okay. Um, but yeah, like. <clears throat> 